You asked for it and here it is. The moving and rotating platforms using the Unity navigation system that can move NavMesh agents. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 30 of the AI series and I'm really excited to bring you the moving and rotating platforms using the Unity Navigation System video. If you haven't checked out AI Series Part 28 where we first did moving platforms, you should go check that one out first because we're gonna build on that in this one to add in the rotation. And if you already have checked out AI Series Part 28, then you already know that there are some limitations and drawbacks to both of the methods that we're gonna to implement today in the rotating and moving platforms. With option number one, it's a lot more easy now for the agent to become behind where it's supposed to be because we have that additional angular velocity on top of that linear velocity of that platform moving and rotating. Hey, and just really quick, I wanna give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you wanna help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash academy. You can get your name up on the screen. You can get a voice shout out starting at the silver tier and some other cool perks. Special shout outs to Raphael and Andrew Bowen for being the silver tier supporters. I am so grateful. Thank you. In the scene view, you can see that I've added some arms to our nav mesh agent so that way we can tell the direction that he's facing. Everything else in the scene works the exact same as the moving platforms video, which again, if you haven't checked it out, you got to go back, check that one out because we're going to build on that and just make these platforms rotate and keep our nav mesh agent moving with that platform as it rotates. If we open up the moving platform script, we're gonna add a private float rotation per frame, set that to 1F by default and serialize that field. We'll then scroll down to the move platform coroutine function and define a float angle to be the transform.rotation.eulerangles.y. We're only going to spin this platform on the Y axis. So we're gonna keep whatever rotation the object has, and then we're just gonna spin it on that Y axis. Then the while loop for moving the platform, we'll set the angle to be angle plus equals rotation per frame. And then we'll set the transform.rotation to be quaternion.euler passing in the transform.rotation.eulerangles.x passing the angle for Y and the transform.rotation.eulerangles.z for the Z. And that's it, that'll make our platform spin. Let's then take a look at how that looks in the Unity editor to see what else we need to do. If we just click play, we can see that the moving platforms now spin as they travel to the next point in their waypoint list. But we can see that whenever the agent is on this moving platform, they're not properly rotated with the platform. They're just moving in a straight line like they were doing before. And we would expect that the agent is rotated on the same point that they're actually on on that platform for it to be a realistic looking moving rotating platform, right? So let's hop back over to the moving platform script in Visual Studio and make a couple more changes. What we're gonna do is in this block where we're removing the agents by adjusting their destination, we're gonna define a new vector three called rotated destination. This is gonna be a two part way that we're gonna calculate the new destination. The first thing we're gonna do is calculate this vector three, which is the rotated destination, which will be the current destination after we've rotated the platform by the rotation per frame degrees, right? To do that, we'll do quaternion.euler passing in zero for the X, rotation per frame, for the y and zero for the z because we're only rotating on the y axis. We will then multiply that quaternion by agents on platform indexed by i dot destination minus transform dot position. What that's doing is translating our destination to a point centered around the origin instead of wherever it is now. And what we can do is multiply our new quaternion by this origin centered vector three and then translate it back with the offset of the current transform position of our moving platform. That will give us the same rotation that happened on the moving platform except applied to our nav mesh agent's destination. Then we'll add in the transform dot position at the end to undo that subtraction of the transform dot position we did whenever we were doing the rotation to move it essentially back to wherever it was before after it's been offset. Once we've calculated that rotated destination, we will do agents on platform indexed by i dot destination equals rotated destination plus and then the platform move direction times the move speed. So we've taken the rotated direction and then we will also add in that linear movement that happens every frame. And instead of doing plus equals on the agents on platform destination, we are only doing equals because we have already considered the agents on platform destination in our rotated destination. If we hop back to the Unity editor and I click play, I've slowed down the rotation speed a little bit and we'll let our agent get onto the platform. And as soon as the platform starts rotating, you can see that the agent is moving where you would expect them to stay on that moving platform as 
it rotates. So right now they're in this corner and they're staying aligned to that corner. They're not kind of sliding around as the platform moves like it was doing before. But we have the same limitation that we had before on the previous video, where if the platform moves too fast and the angular velocity plus a linear velocity is more than what the agent can keep up with, then they start sliding behind and you get this weird rubber band effect where the agent's trying to get to the destination, but the platform's moving too quickly. So as I move this up to something like two, you can see that the agent can no longer keep track of where they're supposed to be and they kind of rubber band back whenever the platform comes to a stop. Remember that in AI series part 28, when we first implemented the moving platforms, we had two ways to move our agents. One of them, the player can still control the agent whenever it's on that moving platform. And the other one, the player could not move while they were on a moving platform. So let's go ahead and implement that second option now. If we open up Visual Studio, we'll comment out this top part that we just implemented and uncomment the bottom part where we have the agents on platform indexed by i.warp used instead. We're gonna do almost the exact same thing that we did before. We're gonna define a vector three rotation to position that's going to be equal to a new quaternion dot Euler passing in zero rotation per frame and zero and we're going to multiply that by a vector again but this time we're going to use agents on platform indexed by i dot transform dot position minus transform dot position since we're warping the agent we don't care about what their destination is we care about where they currently are we need to do the translation rotation and then translation back again based on the position instead of the destination and then we need to update the agent's rotation because we want them to be rotating with the platform so so we'll do agents on platform index by i dot transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot Euler passing in agents on platform index by i dot transform dot rotation dot Euler angles dot x. We'll do the same for y and z where on the y we will also add in the rotation per frame so that way the agent is actually rotating with the platform as it rotates. Then at the bottom where we have agents on platform index by i dot warp we're going to do rotated position plus platform move direction times move speed. So we're going to again consider the rotated position and then warp it with that position plus the linear movement that the platform is doing. If we hop back to the Unity editor and click play, I'll put the nav mesh agent onto a corner of this moving platform so we get the worst case turning scenario and we can see that the agent correctly moves exactly where we expect that it's going to go. If I increase the rotation per frame to something like one, we can see that the agent still does that very well. And if I increase it to something even higher like two, it gets kind of ridiculous, but he's still staying where he's supposed to be. And that's it. This comes with all of the same limitations and drawbacks that we talked about before, just with the rotation, it's a little bit more amplified, right? Because for the rotating platform, if you want to control that agent while that platform is moving, then you need a lot higher movement speed and acceleration because you're moving with angular velocity as well as that linear velocity, right? But now we have it working with two ways where you can have it where the player can control the agent while it's on a moving and rotating platform, and one where they can't. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. Remember, this new video is posted every Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.